Micho Vuksanovic takes tourists out on his boat to enjoy the beauty of Budva. Montenegro is a favourite holiday destination. Since the start of the war in Ukraine, it's become a refuge for many Russians. Do the yachts in the port belong to them? That's just speculation. We don't know who owns them, but there are many Montenegrins here. There's a load of rumours, Russians, Russians, but not here. Voksanovic says the yachts that belong to the super-rich are more likely to dock a few kilometres to the north, in Tivat. It's a good guess. There are several super-yachts at the Porto Montenegro luxury marina. The trident berthed here is a whopping 65 metres long. Its owner isn't Russian, but a Ukrainian oligarch, against whom the US has imposed sanctions. But the official yachting registry reveals that one in three yachts in Montenegro belongs to a Russian. Most of them aren't subject to the embargo. Montenegro's coast, especially the town of Budva, has been a Russian favourite for decades. They have close ties, historically and linguistically. Voksanovic shows us Duklia, which the Russians built just a stone's throw from Budva. That's a very attractive location, and rather pricey. They say they cost between eight and 9,000 euros per square metre. An apartment can easily go for a million. Even though many here earn a living from tourism, hardly any locals are profiting from the boom. And many aren't happy with how things have changed. I wish it were cleaner. They're building everywhere, but don't put in any plants. All the green areas are gone. The rents, it's bad for tenants. We can't afford these rents on an ordinary income. It's not only the super-rich Russians who are flocking to Montenegro. Others have come here to escape Putin's war. Like Archem, who was travelling in Thailand with a friend when Putin mobilised his troops. In Russia, I can uh, say, uh, speak what I, uh, what happened in my mind, and something like that, and uh, because of some laws, because of a uh, million reasons, and uh, it's Russia is unsafe place, and uh, it's clear to see, and uh, here I feel, well, like I don't know, like a fresh breath. You, you know, I can't breathe in here. When I was a child and I said that I wanted to live in interesting times, this is not what I had envisioned at all. So it's bitter, it's bitter yeah. Because I feel like uh, we've been robbed of a country with a future. And uh, I'm not sure that there is a way we can fix it, at least fix it fast. No way. Archam works in a barber shop. He's not worried about his future. But sometimes it's hard, he says, for example, when his own mother believes Putin's propaganda. You know, my brain became I know, stronger and uh, I have a lot of stamina for, for changing my life and something like that. Uh, I realized that I can ev everything, I can, I can do everything really. Yeah, and uh, I really need uh, support and uh, people like me need support the same and uh, we're, we are in the same boat, you know, in that, in that uh, ocean of the violence. There's little trace of this violence on the Adriatic coast. Like most Montenegrins, Micho Vuksanovic doesn't complain much about the new rivals, but one thing does bother him. They don't have any sense of what the sea is about. It's not part of their culture, the water, the fish, everything that makes the sea, the sea. His beloved Budva is changing, but he hopes it will still retain its charm and beauty.